Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here with a quick Photoshop tutorial. We're gonna go from this to this in about four minutes. Let's jump into Photoshop and get started. All right, getting started here with a Photoshop document that has just two layers of live type, both in the color white. I'm working, by the way, at HD resolution, 1920 by 1080. This technique works well at just about any resolution, but I do recommend working at 16-bit, and that's gonna do a much better job of blending your colors and avoiding any artifacts. I'll start by taking this text layer on top and dragging it onto the folder icon to put it into its own group folder. Then I'm gonna right-click on the layer and select Convert to Smart Object. I'll set the layer's blending mode to screen, then in the filter menu under blur, I'm gonna use Gaussian blur. This will be a very subtle blur, just 0.5 pixels, just to soften the edges a little. All right, then I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC, and I'm gonna repeat that six times. So I end up with the original plus six copies of this layer. I'll leave the original bottom one alone, and starting with the next one up, I'm gonna double click on the Gaussian blur filter and change the value. So the first one was 0.5 pixels, this one will be three pixels, above that will be 10 pixels, next one up will be 25 pixels, above that will be 75 pixels, next will be 250 pixels, and finally 500 pixels for a big soft blur. All right, next I'm going to the fill and adjustment layers menu and creating a new solid color layer. In the pop-up, I'll make this layer black. And I'm gonna drag this layer down to be at the bottom of the group, still in the group folder, but the last layer down at the bottom. Then I'm gonna create a new layer, just a regular layer. I'm gonna hit D to make sure my colors are set to default. That'll get the right look out of this filter. In the render section, I'm gonna use clouds. Then I'm gonna take this clouds layer and drag it up three spots so it sits just above the bottom three Gaussian blur copies. I'll set this layer's blending mode to multiply then bring the opacity back to 50%. All right, I'm gonna collapse down this group folder and to bring some color into it, I'm gonna go into the adjustment layers menu and I'm a big fan of using the gradient map adjustment layer. I'm gonna hold the option key on a Mac or on a PC hold the alt key and click in between the adjustment layer and the group folder so the adjustment layer will only affect that group. Then I can click on the gradient in the properties tab to customize it and here not only can I start to introduce colors into the image, I can also drag the colors around and really refine how bright I want each color to be. I like to just experiment with gradients here and save presets as I go. So all of these are really simple gradients with two or three colors, but they really bring some life to the glow effect. Finally, I'm gonna set this entire group folder's blending mode to screen. Then I'm gonna select this other text layer and run through the same process. I'm gonna time warp through it since we've already seen how it works. I'll cheat the clock a little bit. Don't hold it against me. But this time when I get to the gradient map step, I'm gonna go for some warmer colors. There's something really nice about having multiple colors that kind of blend in with each other. All right, well, no matter how good that ends up, I've always found that if you want kind of a photographic finish, it really helps to introduce just a little bit of photographic detail in here. That's why they call it Photoshop, right? So I'm gonna grab this interesting looking lens artifact. This is something I shot on a macro lens through an old piece of glass. This is a free image from texturelabs.org, which is a site I created to share my entire career's worth of assets for free in one big strange experiment. But I will select all and copy this then paste it on top and set it to screen mode. Then I'm gonna use Commander Control T to transform and scale that down a bit. And I'll bring the opacity back to 50% or so. A really subtle, but just a little visual cue. I think a little imperfection can actually add a lot to an image. All right, while we're at it, I'm gonna drop a little bit of atmosphere in here. Kind of a cool, subtle, drifting fog. But I'm going to paste a copy of that on top and set the blending mode to overlay. Then I'll bring the opacity back to about 70%. All right, well, there it is, glow like a pro. I hope this tutorial will help you to create something. Please do me the quick favor of hitting the like button just to help the video get ranked. If you like this kind of thing, be sure to check out the Texture Labs channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.